When was the last time you felt truly loved? Close your eyes and think about it. You can probably think of certain people, maybe a specific time where you felt loved. Perhaps it was someone who showered you with kindness, who easily forgave you when you messed up, who always answers your calls, someone who's always there for you when you need them, someone who's beautiful, who notices your efforts and appreciates what you do. Maybe it's someone who gifts you with everything that you need, want, or even gives you things you didn't even ask for. Now think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is al-wadud, the one who's the source of all affection and love. Even though he doesn't need us in any way, and we don't benefit him the slightest bit. He has a special form of love for his righteous servants, those who love him. Allah is a rauf the one who's so kind and compassionate towards us. He's the one whose compassion, kindness, and care is beyond comprehension. It manifests in so many different ways. He doesn't instantly punish us when we disobey Him. He sent us prophets and messengers to teach us what we need to know. He sent us the Qur'an for us to be guided to success in this world and the next. Allah is Al-Ghafoor, the perpetual forgiver. No matter how many times we mess up, he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, accepts our repentance when we turn to him sincerely. He's al-qarib, the near, the one who's closer to us than our own jugular vein. He knows our innermost thoughts and feelings. He's al-mujib, the one who responds, the one who answers our prayers. He gives you all the time in the world. He hears your requests and responds to them with your best interests in mind. He's Al-Jameel, the most beautiful, who allows us to see the beauty of his creation in this world. He's Al-Shakur, who appreciates the little good that you do and rewards you for it, even though he doesn't have to. He's Al-Wahhab, He's the all-giver, the one who bestows gifts and favors and blessings upon all of his creation. Al-Wahhab gives gifts constantly, generously, endlessly, and without expecting anything in return. It's stated in the traditions that Allah said, O Dawood, remind the people of my favors upon them, because the hearts are inclined to love those that do good to it. How could we not love him? If we put together all the reasons why we love other people or things and then apply it to Allah, we would see that truly it is him that deserves our love. The Prophet wasallam relayed to us the ways that Allah shows his love. When Allah loves someone, he calls Jibreel and says, Yeah, Jibreel, I love such and such person, so love them. Imagine Jibreel, this great angel who Allah sent to the prophets with his message. Then Jibreel will go to the heavens and call out and say, Allah loves such and such person, so love her or him. The Prophet ﷺ said that there's no space in the heavens without an angel praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angels will love that person. Imagine all of those angels will love you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place acceptance on earth for the beloved believer. It would have been enough for Allah to say that he loves a person. For what more could someone want? But because Allah is Al-Wadud and Al-Kareem, the most generous, He declares this love to the angels, which doesn't stay in the heavens, but it descends to the earth because Allah puts acceptance of this person in the hearts of the believers. Allah not only loves you, but He shows you He loves you. And if we've been in the dark about this, it's time to notice how Allah manifests His love for us, for you and for me every day. Once you begin to absorb the enormity of this love, your heart will melt. You might be saying at this point, 
not me. Allah doesn't love me. You don't know my hardships. You don't know what I'm going through right now. The Prophet ﷺ told us that if Allah loves someone, He afflicts him with trials. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was the most beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was the most tested. Look at his blessed life. His father died before he was born. His mother died when he was only six years old. His grandfather, who then took care of him, died two years later. He went from being the most liked, the most popular person in Mecca, to being the most disliked and ridiculed person in Mecca. He was called a liar, a sorcerer, a magician, crazy. He was abused physically and emotionally. His family, friends, and followers were harmed, starved. He was poisoned. He even buried all of his children with the exception of Fatima radiallahu anha in his lifetime. Subhanallah, he went through so much. And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu once asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which people are most tested? And the Prophet said, they are the Prophets. And then after the Prophets are the best people. And then after them are the next best. And the servants will continue to be put to trial until they're left walking upon this earth without any sin. These hardships are meant to bring us closer to Allah, to forgive our sins, to elevate our status. And if we find that we don't love Allah, it's because we don't know him. All of the pleasures of this world are not even an ounce of the pleasures of what Allah has prepared for us in paradise. Have you ever asked yourself, do I love Allah? Perhaps tonight you can reflect and look into your heart and find the answer. <laughs>